Some of us can't imagine a garden without birds. They bring beauty, color, and song to our landscape. What can we do to attract birds to our yards? This presentation is brought to you by King Garden Education and Iron Bee Learning. Why should we try to attract birds to the landscape? Unfortunately, urbanization and a decline in natural habitats has resulted in precipitous declines in many bird species. A 2019 science article showed that bird populations have dropped by nearly 3 billion birds across North America, a decline of 29% from 1970. Why should we try to attract birds to the landscape? Our landscapes can become essential habitat for birds and other wildlife, and in return, the birds will eat pests. Birds are an essential part of the garden community food chain. Wild birds eat pests such as mosquitoes, Japanese beetles, grasshoppers, cutworms, and many other pests. Some eat weeds and weed seeds. Birds like sparrows, finches, and other seed-eating birds help to reduce the weed seeds in the landscape. Some birds pollinate plants. Hummingbirds, for example, transport pollen from one flower to another and also eat insect pests. Some birds help to disperse fruit and seeds. Robins, bluebirds, chickadees, waxwings, and many other birds eat fruit and will help to disperse the seeds. How do we attract birds to the landscape? We need to provide the necessities. Food, water, shelter and nest sites, and also protection from predators and harsh weather. We can do supplemental feeding where we provide food to the birds. The U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service estimates that more than 50 million North Americans feed birds about 1 million tons of seed per year. Some people question whether we should feed birds or not. A study by the Cornell Lab of Ornithology used Project Feeder Watch data to answer that question. They examined 98 species that use feeders and found that those species do as well as or better than species that rarely have supplementary feeding. Bird feeders usually are filled with seeds for the seed-eating birds, and hummingbird feeders provide a sugary solution for hummingbirds. Suet cakes, fruits, nuts, and other foods can be provided depending on the species. Be sure to buy good quality bird food from reputable sources. The shape of a bird's beak is a clue to what it eats. Birds with thick, chunky beaks like this house finch, use their beaks to crack open seeds. Insect-eating birds like warblers have long, thin beaks to pick insects out of nooks and crannies. Carnivorous birds like hawks have sharp beaks for tearing flesh. Some birds like this Stellar's jay have multi-tool beaks, strong enough to crack open seeds, but also long enough to probe for tasty larvae and beetles. Clean bird feeders regularly. Seed feeders should be cleaned at least once per month, while hummingbird feeders at least once per week or every time it's filled. This is important to minimize the spread of bacteria and fungi throughout the bird populations. Take the feeder apart. If you wash by hand, be sure to use rubber gloves to avoid contamination. Wash with soap and hot water or with a dilute bleach solution, one part bleach to nine parts water. Rinse thoroughly and allow to dry before filling. You can also grow plants for food. A wide variety of plants in the landscape will provide food and attract a much greater diversity of bird species. Plants also provide nesting materials and shelter. A bird-friendly landscape will have a wide variety of plants, including large trees, small trees, shrubs, 
like berry bushes, vines, grasses, and flowers. Not sure which plants to grow? The National Audubon Society has a native plant database to help you find plants to attract birds. Just type in your zip code to get a list of local native plants to attract birds in your area. You also need to provide a water source for the birds. They need a supply of clean water for drinking and bathing, and it's important to keep it clean. A bird bath is one option. It's essentially like a shallow puddle, about one to three inches deep, and it should have a non-slip surface. You can add a stone or branches so small birds have a place to perch. The bird bath should be in an open area so birds can watch for predators, but shelter should be nearby. Other options would be a pond with a shallow area for small birds, misters, which are especially attractive to hummingbirds, bird waterers are similar to a bird feeder but filled with water. And you can attract more birds by having bubblers, fountains, or waterfalls. Moving water is especially attractive to birds. A bird-friendly landscape will have a variety of plants to provide nesting sites, shelter, and protection from predators. Evergreen trees and shrubs provide ideal winter shelter. Let it go! If a landscape has a bit more of a wild and natural appearance, it will tend to attract more birds and provide more nesting and hiding places. Break up the lawn with trees and shrubs. There are several species of bluebirds in the United States. You may see the eastern bluebird, western bluebird, or mountain bluebird, depending on your location. Bluebirds eat many insects and their larvae. You can attract them to your yard by offering mealworms and berries. They prefer open areas with low grass and perches like fence rails. Another way to attract them is by building or buying a nest box. Orioles eat caterpillars and other larvae, beetles, grasshoppers, fruit, and nectar. You can attract them to your garden by planting berry bushes and fruit trees. They prefer to nest in trees and shrubs. There are many different kinds of sparrows and finches. Sometimes we refer to them as LBBs, little brown birds, if we don't know the species. They range from small goldfinches and juncos to larger grosbeaks and towhees. You can tell from their chunky beaks, sparrows and finches are seed eaters, but sometimes will also eat beetles and larvae. They need trees and shrubs for shelter and nesting. Chickadees eat large numbers of insects and love black oil sunflower seeds. These energetic little birds are easily attracted by bird feeders, bird baths, shelter, and nesting spots that are available all year. Northern cardinals are beautiful birds, which are primarily seed eaters and will help reduce weed seeds. They also eat fruits and berries. In addition, they eat, or feed their young, beetles, stink bugs, and other insects. They prefer to nest in dense tangles of shrubs and vines. Swallows and martins are voracious insectivores. They won't be attracted to a bird feeder. Each bird can eat hundreds of mosquitoes and moths every day. They may nest in bird houses. Cliff swallows build their own houses under eaves. They prefer to perch on tall structures like wires and antennae and nest in cavities. They usually forage in open areas where they can fly freely. Woodpeckers eat larvae, borers, beetles, and other insects in trees. They're cavity nesters and will nest in bird boxes that are mounted high, about 10 to 20 feet above the ground, or in dead trees, called snags. 
One way to attract woodpeckers, besides having a heavy infestation of bugs, is to use suet. They also like peanuts and mealworms. Hummingbirds feed on nectar of plants and tiny insects. They can be attracted by hummingbird feeders or by growing nectar-rich plants, particularly those with red or orange flowers. Hummingbirds love monarda, bee balm, bottle brush trees, zinnias, and salvias. Doves primarily eat seeds. They are ground feeders or will feed off platforms in open spaces. It's very important to give them a protected area to escape from cats and other predators. Morning doves build minimal nests, often just a few twigs on an eave or gutter. Jays are very smart, beautiful birds. They eat a variety of foods, including insects, larvae, peanuts, nuts, fruits, grains, and I've even seen them eat dog food. Platform feeders are the best way to provide food. These are medium-sized birds that sometimes get a reputation for being bullies. They can push other birds around in the landscape and sometimes eat baby birds or eggs. Large trees, shrubs, and thickets provide shelter and nest sites. If you notice a flock of noisy active birds suddenly diving into a bush, there's probably a hawk overhead. Protect small birds by shielding feeders and providing cover where they can hide from hawks. Cooper's hawks, sharp-shinned hawks, and kestrels often live in urban and suburban landscapes. They eat squirrels, mice, snakes, grasshoppers, and sometimes eat birds. Owls help control small rodent populations. They usually nest in holes of large, dense trees, including conifers, deciduous trees, and palms. They prefer a quiet neighborhood with low light at night. Now let's suppose that you've been very successful in attracting birds to your yard, but now they're eating the plants that you're trying to grow. One of the best ways to exclude birds is to use barriers such as netting, chicken wire, or cloches. Visual threats such as scarecrows, plastic owls, snakes, shiny objects like CDs may scare the birds away for a short period of time, but they quickly learn to ignore them. If you change the items frequently, it may keep the birds on their toes. If you want to attract birds to your yard, you should avoid pesticides because many of the birds that are attracted to your yard can be harmed or killed by consuming plants, insects, or rodents that have been sprayed with pesticides. In addition to habitat loss, the use of pesticides has been one of the major reasons why bird populations have plummeted in recent years.